This summer marks the time for another Olympics, and this time we have Joel Embiid elected to compete and represent Team USA. We got our first look of it in a scrimmage against Team Canada, and, well, it didn't go great for Joel. I want to break down a little bit about what went down and how I think people are going to be eating their words for the performance of Joel Embiid moving forward, but to dive right in and address things head on, let's just take a look at the stat line here. For Joel Embiid, five points, four turnovers, and fouled out in 12 minutes. Yeah, does not get much worse than that. And we're being honest, it looked pretty bad on the court. It wasn't as bad as I think some of the perception of. He did have some nice connective passes. I thought the teamwork playing off guys like Steph Curry and LeBron James was really cool to watch. And I thought Embiid was mostly pretty good with the ball outside of the four turnovers, which I know you can't just brush off there. But he did make some nice plays in the, the brief time that he had. But yes, of course, fouling out right at the in the third quarter. And you can see the the visual here, 56 to 49 at the time, 501 left in the third quarter. Did not go well. Now, my first point here being is anybody that's super critiquing this or surprised by this, he just likely version looked like the version of Joel Embiid who has not played for a couple months. That we've seen this story year in and year out as Sixers fans, knowing that he looks like a guy that's completely kind of out of shape and playing sloppy through the first couple games of the season. Then all of a sudden you get about 10 games in and you're like, oh my gosh, this guy looks like the best player in the entire planet. I think we're seeing that at the Olympic level, and there's certainly been some adjustment to the style of play that Joel Embiid's going to have to catch up to himself. I've seen him catching plenty of the strays for foul baiting and everything else. So we know people love to pile on Joel whenever the opportunity presents itself there. But I, and jokes such as this as well, such as fun fact, almost every member of Team USA has been to the conference finals. The only one who hasn't, Joel Embiid. And my comment directly is that he's also, he's also the only player on that roster who's won MVP since 2016. So if you want him for the bad, you got to take him for the good as well, because he does hold up that end of the bargain. And I have two big things that I want to get into here. Number one, the talking points regarding Joel Embiid's decision to play in the Olympics. And for starters, I think it's awesome that he's representing Team USA. And to give it in uh, Joel words exactly here. I think it is worth noting on why he wanted to play. So Joel tweeted out that I'm really proud and excited about this decision. It was not easy. I'm blessed to call Cameroon, France, and USA home. After talking to my family, I knew it had to be Team USA. I want to play with all my brothers in the league. I want to play for my fans because they've been incredible since the day I came here. But most of all, I want to honor my son who was born in the US. I want my boy to know I played my first Olympics for him. That's the guy y'all are hating on, really? I love that Joel is so open about that, and it is cool. And in complete fairness to him, just think about this from his perspective. That this is a dude who lived in Cameroon until the age of 16, came over to America to take a chance on himself, and has succeeded by every single definition. That he has flourished into a star basketball player. A guy that has grown to be recognized as the best player in the entire NBA by being crowned MVP, by signing the, the max contracts that he has, making the amount of money that he has. His whole life has started in America, that he's gotten married in America, he's had his child in America, he's started this entire life, that now turning 30, essentially half of his life that he has lived here, and in my eyes, that is the American dream, is this guy left home for a brighter future and has accomplished every definition that you could possibly do that here. So shout out to Joel, I think it's awesome, and I also think there's going to be quite a few people eating their words once we see him kick off the cobwebs and play a little bit. Now, as far as the basketball conversation, we know who Joel Embiid is as a basketball player. Just last season, 34.7 points per game, 11 rebounds, 5.6 assists, 1.7 blocks, 1.2 steals, shot 38.8% from three and 52.9% from the field. Also 57.1% from the corner, which is straight up absurd there. We know who Joel Embiid is at this point in time. I do think there is an adjustment period for him playing next to these stars. That We know the, the typical Joel Embiid style is as how high usage he is, that he wants to get to his spots, he wants to control everything, and that's just not being the case when you're sharing the floor with the LeBron James, the Kevin Durant, the Devin Bookers, the Steph Currys, the names go on and on for this Team USA. It truly is an Avengers Assemble type lineup this year. And I think that's awesome as well. That it's very pick and choose the years where it feels like USA is going all out. There's certainly times where it feels like guys are opting out and not into it, but not this year. They sent the squad and it's cool that Joel Embiid is a part of it. And rightfully so, he's holding down things as the starting center because he is the best big man in the planet. Definitely in America, Jokic is the only argument there. And as far as the actual style of play, I think it's really good for Joel to adjust to this, that in international play, there is not as much, you know, whistles and free throws and guys going to the line that it's way more physical, way more free flowing. 
they let the boys play a little bit in international waters, and that's going to be good for Joel. And on top of that, there's way more team aspect of it, that I think he's going to improve as a passer. He's going to learn things from playing off these top guys. And I think those are all characteristics that he can bring back right back to these Sixers and provide positive outlooks. That when you have Paul George and Tyrese Maxey, while they might not be Steph Curry and LeBron James here, they're not that far out of the equation there. And they're guys that you can still accomplish the same basketball skills and goals and production by using them in similar ways. And that's one of the biggest selling points to me that I've been so excited about the Paul George signing and, of course, Tyrese Maxey just growing into the player that he is, as they are players that are equally as dominant and productive without being as ball dominant, that they can be off ball spacers, catch and shoot options, and they're still going to punish teams as a result of that. So I love the fit for them playing alongside Joel Embiid, and I do think he's only going to get better as a passer. So again, I do want to make it clear that for everybody that is critiquing Joel right now, for all the takes of Anthony Davis should be starting off more, this guy shouldn't even be representing Team USA. Just keep those receipts, and I do want to circle back once the actual Olympics come and Joel Embiid has kicked off the rust fully. Now, I've seen the pushback both fair and foul. The foul I'm calling out, the people saying that he should not be able to represent Team USA or all those conversations, that to me is an out of bounds. Again, I can't think you can do anything but honor the reason that he wants to represent his son and talk about how his family has started in the USA. Once again, a guy who encapsulates the American dream in a way that very few people can. So completely out of bounds for those type of criticism. The fair criticism for Joel Embiid competing in Team USA is the injury risk. And look, I hear you here. My pushback and why I'm still excited about him going is for starters, there'll be a full two months once the Olympics end until the NBA season even starts. There's been a full two months since that point in time. So there is that cushion before and after. And I'm still more optimistic of I would like for him to be in shape and playing high level basketball, that he's going to improve at a rate playing next to these guys and playing against the top competition in the world far more than would be the case if he's just working out with Drew Hanlon, getting up shots on a daily basis. And while Joel has been excellent at adding layers to his game, on a year-in and year-out like standpoint, I think we're past the point where Joel is polishing skills. That There's no doubt he's arguably the most skilled big man to ever play the game of basketball. It's much more about learning these intricacies of playing next to people. If he can pick LeBron's brain, we know what a, a basketball hoop head that Joel truly is, that there's been plenty of occasions where reporters are walking in the locker room and he's just watching league pass on his phone, checking out other games. You get to learn from the brightest and best right in front of you and playing next to him. Those are opportunities that you just don't get a lot. And also, I think it's important to note, like, at the end of his career, when you look back, you want to accomplish everything that's on it. Everything that's on that bucket list, you want to make sure that you have done. And for Joel, if playing in the Olympics is one of those, then shout out to you for going and chasing that. I can't have any issue with that or be upset about that. At the end of the day, while I hear the concern, and one of my pushes for the pro in this conversation has been oftentimes some super teams begin to form when guys figure out they like playing with each other. Now, Joel has already cashed in the chip the chips for what the super team is here in Philadelphia with Tyrese Maxey with Paul George and himself but I still think it is beneficial for him to be around so as long as he's not getting recruited by others which based on how he played last night should not be the case I'm not that worried about things but in reality I do think Joel if he had any sort of impatience with Philadelphia it probably would have occurred by now and that's not something that's going to be weighing heavy on my mind and I do think he's genuinely excited and locked in for this season in a way that we really haven't seen from him in a couple years so for now so everybody relax. Let's hit, let him kick off the rust. We'll let him find his Joel Embiid form before we know it. He is going to be looking like the most talented player on the Team USA roster. I guarantee we'll get some 30-plus point performances, 40-plus point performances, even with that Olympic team. I truly think there will be the Joel Embiid games because he is such a monstrous figure that there will be matchup issues for sure, depending on what team they're, they're playing and everything else there. But there will be the Joel Embiid games, which I'll be very excited to watch on the brightest stage. So looking forward to that. But again, everybody pump the brakes, relax. Let's hit, let him enjoy playing a little bit of low stakes basketball to where he doesn't have so much scrutiny on him. And I only think he's going to get better for his actual on-court abilities in the process. So, Joel, let's shake this off, brother. Let's not make this a, a common occurrence. Let's keep away from those fouls. And my final point to, to note that I did want to make clear, there was an altercation with him and Dwight Powell where he hit <laughs> Dwight Powell with an elbow kind of boxing out. If you watch the video in a vacuum, I can see getting upset about it. Anybody that actually watched that game start to finish, which I was staying up late and watching that one last night, it wasn't anything that jumped out. That, as I mentioned, international basketball is more physical. There's less fouling. And I think sometimes Joel Embiid forgets that he is the biggest dude on the court. That if you're a six foot eight or six foot six dude that's sticking up a little elbow when you go to box out, nobody says a word, nobody notices anything. When you're seven foot two, 300 pounds, and you fling an elbow out there, people take notice pretty quick. And that's pretty much what exactly happened with Dwight Powell. 
I as much as there are cases in which Joel Embiid has dirty has been dirty, I don't think this was one of them. And in general, I don't think he's a dirty player. If I have to assess a word to it, that clumsy is the one that I would go to. Sometimes I think he just is gets out of control and doesn't quite have the coordination we would appreciate. But for that Dwight pa- fa- Dwight Powell foul last night, I think if you watch that game in its entirety, that play specifically would not jump out. I'm glad that Dwight was okay. That led to Joel getting an unsportsmanlike penalty and was shortly before he fouled out, literally 30 seconds after he got his fifth foul. So ultimately, let's clean all of that up, but not anything to be worried about from a Joel Embiid perspective or anybody else that wants to throw those accusations out of. So get all these jokes out now. Let everybody hear all about how Joel Embiid doesn't belong to play on this team. Up the talent. Anthony Davis should be starting. Bam Adebayo is better. All those takes. I want them out there and save those bookmarks, people, because Joel Embiid will be back and ready to perform on the biggest stage when the brightest lights are actually shining. And appreciate each and every one of you guys for tuning into this video. I do want to hear from you guys in the comments. How do you feel about Joel Embiid representing Team USA or playing in the Olympics in general? Are you concerned with the injury? I personally, I hear it, but I'm happy for the guy. I want him to play if he wants to, and that does seem to be the case. So shout out to Joel Embiid there. Also, make sure you're smashing that subscribe button if you haven't already. Drop in a like on this video, and I'll be talking to you next time right here on Sixers Digest. Peace.